been six months since uh, the events of Horizon Zero Dawn. And Aloy has noticed throughout the world that this red blight is kind of encroaching everywhere. And this is a world-ending threat, and she has to find a way to stop it. We really wanted to improve. We really wanted to kind of like listen to the fans and listen to our reviewers and also based on our own internal feedback. And so there was a whole set of things we wanted to do with settlements, including general sense of them being more lifelike, better animations, better schedules for the NPCs, uh, and also audio. We really wanted to improve the sort of crowd audio in the sense that when you go into any given place in a settlement, it has its own like kind of like audio personality. And we also have a situation where Aloy is going in to the Forbidden West and encountering new tribes, specifically the Utaru and the Tanakh. And we really wanted to make sure those were as differentiated as possible with, you know, NPCs doing things that they would only do in that tribe uh, to give it that sense of life. It's great to have a huge open world, but if all of the activities in it feel kind of tacked on or, or not related or not essential, that's not a great feeling. We wanted to make sure that there's a certain path through this game where if players want to experience uh, the main quest and kind of get to the end of the story as quickly as possible, uh, that they could do that. And also, there's definitely a, a progression through this game that's really focused on combat. But if there is going to be an activity in the world uh, a board game, um, a melee pit, um, even a camp or out, outpost associated with Regala's Rebels, or, or there are other examples, um, things that return from the previous game. They all need to feel part of the world, they all need to be part of the story. Asking nicely. Arrest her! I'd like to see you try! So, what we wanted to do with Aloy in the Forbidden West is just put her under as much pressure as possible. And so, obviously, she has the pressure of trying to resolve the Blight, which is a world-ending threat, and she has all the other pressures of, like, fighting machines and just trying to survive in this world. But she also has this other pressure of trying to live up to the example of her genetic mother, Elizabeth Sobek. This is probably one of the greatest people in history and someone who literally almost single-handedly saved the world. That's a very, very high bar for Aloy to live up to and it affects her interactions with other people. 
It's also important uh, to remember that this is someone who grew up an outcast and only just started to interact with the world as a whole in the previous game. Lancers! Form up! Aloy's companions offer um, different interactions that uh, display different aspects of Aloy's personality. And this is something that uh, carries through the whole game. It's actually one of the major themes of the game is how does she relate to other people? How does she relate to her companions? How does that change her as a person? And Aloy's companions are really central to the story and the theme of the Forbidden West. It's really the way that she relates to each of them differently and the impact that they have on her that really forces her to kind of evolve her personality throughout the game. Aaron! there is an enormous amount of story and territory and combat to be had. Uh, but the slice that we did give you is really uh, near the beginning of Aloy's journey, um, near the beginning of her uh, sojourn in the Forbidden West, and also just the very beginning of her evolution as a character.